And we're live. <laughs> what's, what's, up, God, what's up? What's up? What's up? This is going to be an interesting show, all right? <laughs> yes. yeah, but, it's a little different. So I have, I have a very set of a special guests today. They're being hitting the, the convention scene by storm. I'm wearing this Luchadores mask. And uh, uh, actually, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? So tell me, tell me a little bit. How are you guys? Welcome to the show. Doing good. Thank we're you good for having good. us. Thank you for having us. So you guys are, so you, you guys are podcasters right yes correct yeah correct. and uh, what's the name of the show and that's the story podcast and you can find us on we're on spotify we're on apple we're on uh pretty much heart radio pretty everywhere. Much everywhere pretty much everywhere everywhere and why the luchadores mask if i may uh for me i, I told him if, if this was something that worked out and we start to get well known i still want to have my privacy also and not go out in public and be gang rushed by people. <laughs> so, so, so. For security, you guys are covering yourself. I, I, sh I feel like I should wear one of those. Things, one of those things. Well, it's for security, and also we figured let's try something different. Also, maybe something to help us stand out a little bit. It catches attention. So, yeah, a little gimmick or something. So it had nothing to do with you guys being Mexican or luchadores no, in real no, life or anything no, like no. that. I'm no. actually I'm actually Puerto Rican. Maya, all so, right, Colombian. Oh, okay. Yeah, quite so. quite a quite a different mix. So, what what is the show about? I know you guys. I've seen you guys now hitting every single convention, making stories from there. Um, tell me a little bit about the show. Yes, it's more of a every pocket of the world. So we have advices from relationships. It's our like our personal journals. You know, like why do women that are pretty sometimes be very petty? Maybe so that's what you have to cover your face. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> you might be talking about one of you out there. Right, exactly. That's why you guys are covering your faces. And it's it's more of like we have a lot of relatable stories. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's trying to reach everybody out there that can relate with us. And we're not very we don't have a niche. We have we try to touch everything like conspiracies. We love conspiracies. And that and that's what you got me. And we that's saw what you got me because I'm like heavy into conspiracies okay. and stuff like that. But so how do you go from 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 personal relationships to to did we land on the moon or not? Well, if I may. Absolutely. Take it. Mm -hmm. We started ripping episodes. We started recording and we started building like a catalog. One day we start talking about conspiracies and you grab sort of a train like, you know what? This traction up here, we could keep it moving. And we have our our co-host, our guest, the conductor, and kid is great. And then you know what? We we, we linked up with them, and then we said, let's, let's talk conspiracies. And he's heavy into conspiracy, oh, he's right? Heavy into conspiracies. He's huge. He he's huge. He's huge on that. And it's you can't see the person, but we know how he looks, so it's perfect. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, the voice does not match the person. Definitely, definitely. And so, yeah, the conspiracies for us was was one aspect of it that we that we enjoy talking about. But I know for me, I can't talk about the same topic all the time. I like to jump around. So a lot of it is if we if we talk during the day, hey, yes, guess what happened to me today? Or I'm going through this with my girl or I heard about this. Let's talk about it. So, so it's kind of everything. Because I was I didn't punch the camera because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a one man operation here. We so can I'm see that, again. which is right. But so explain to me again, so I can edit it. That um, the, do you have a do you have a like um, like I don't know like the Power Rangers? You have this Wizard of Oz behind the scenes who who's the brain no. master of the conspiracy? Is just there's a third person? Is that what you're saying? For this one, we had we included him as our guest. Got it. Because he told us a lot of conspiracies, and he would feed them to me, and I'm like, you know what? Would you be would you be into throwing a few shows with it? We started with one, but then we ran with six. <laughs> so are you are you into conspiracy? Of course, yeah, 100%. absolutely. In what absolutely. degree? Well, I like hearing about them. I like hearing all the different theories that go into them. Then you start thinking about it, and you start putting two and two together. And then a lot of conspiracies. It's basically what things that they tell you, and then so you take it at face value. You don't really think about it. And then as more information starts coming out, you're like, wow, why didn't I see that? Or why didn't I see this? Like, for example, we have... Um, we here, have we go, here we go, here we go. Right off the bat. We, we have a new episode that just came out about the moon landing. Oh, boy. So oh, a boy. friend, I was talking to my friend about that, and he actually brought to my attention. He said, think about it, Fab Five. He said, 
who was the first person on the moon? So I told him, you know, Neil Armstrong or whoever it was. Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Neil Armstrong. So, one small step for man, one giant lead for man. So he said, mm -hmm. he says to me, if if he was the first person on the moon, and you saw him coming out of the spaceship, who was filming it? It was a robotic arm. Was it extended? Yeah. 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 This is very well documented. And All right. Like, yeah. And then that's the one. That's the 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 angle that captured Neil him coming out, getting out of the eagle. Okay. And then this the second shot was actually taken by Buzz Aldrin, who was already there. Like who he he went after, obviously. After he was okay. the second man on the moon, and he took the famous picture of, of uh, Neil standing right next to the eagle. Okay. Oh. All right. Oh. So that was the the bunk, I guess. Well, that was what brought my That's attention to the, the bunk. <laughs> right for that for that particular <laughs> particular theory, and then um, you know the big thing was that it was shot in a Hollywood film studio. And just the other day, you called me up and you said, there's a new movie coming out with fly a trailer, to, Fly Me to, to the moon, moon, where it's about the moon landing. And they're actually talking about filming it in a Hollywood set. I think Scarlett Johansson's in it and Channing Tatum, I think. Yes, yeah. sir. So I was like, wow, that's crazy. So what, what do you think people are obsessed with, uh, you know, like scientifically, well, that, like talking about the moon landing, this is going to be four hour episode, but... Right. It's technically debunked the whole conspiracy, and you can actually prove okay. scientifically that we went to the moon. But at the same time, there's a lot of arguments that yes. I can yes. play both both, both. sides of the roads and, yes. and and torment your 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 conscience tonight. <laughs> but but technically, I would you never you will never caught me on public saying that we never went to the moon. I, I I just won't. Right. Right. But. What makes you think that people that makes people obsessed with this in, in this degree? Which is conspiracies in general, I mean, or just yeah, or the moon, well, the moon is specifically. I think it challenges your common sense of things. Yeah, it makes you think, what if? That's the biggest thing it does. It makes you be like, what if this didn't happen, or what if this did happen, or what if this is behind that? It's intriguing. Yeah, and, and I know, and we we do mention you know the the, the conspiracy theories that we go over. We don't necessarily believe them or don't believe them. It was just things that were in, of interest to us. You're so, from New York, right? From New York, yeah. yeah I grew yeah, up on Long Island. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. I can tell. I can hear. And I was just, I was just there last weekend, so my accent's probably even more yeah, over. pronounced now. <laughs> so, I, in regards of the moon, what? So, what do you guys think? Did, did we go to the moon or not? I don't know. It's like, you know, it, I think the older you get, the more things you, st you start to question and you start to say, wow, this is interesting. Or you start to put maybe two and two together or maybe this is this is why this is debunked or not debunked. For me, I don't know. It's crazy. It's like you see so many things happening. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say no. I don't I don't you think don't, I don't think that you we don't did. think we went to. I don't think that. Got we did. It. How about you? I don't want to agree and piggyback up with piggyback off him. Uh -huh. I want to cause some kind of debate, but I don't think they did so, just for the mere fact that they were going against Russia to who got there first. They they might have went afterwards, and everything everything could line up with it. But during that time, it could have been a great movie they did to feed everybody. Say we got there first, but they did eventually. What and so what are what are the arguments, the main arguments that you guys found so compelling to 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 be inclined to believe that we never went to the moon? What haven't we, what haven't we gone back? What haven't we touched? Because it costs like I don't know, like forty billion dollars or something like that for per per face of it's it's an absurd number. absurd number, right? The reason that they shut down the 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 Apollo missions mm -hmm. was a um, it cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. B it broke. The, the Soviet Union, so we won the war in that sense. And then C, the public lost interest in that. Like, uh, I think after the fifth mission, they were like, oh, yeah, all right, like, you know, okay, show, show me something new. I mean, like, it's the same thing. Guys jumping on a black background, and then they're coming back with rocks. But and that's it. Yeah, so the populace lost interest in going to the moon, and then they shut down the, the project. But that's my question. Interest... They lost interest. Money is printable. They can print money. Why stop at the moon? But now you're aiming at Mars and other planets. Why not start from a piggyback? Get to the moon, explore the moon, move on. Well, Elon Musk um, set a, a, a mission. They're, they're trying to put a man mm -hmm. on Mars. That's the next step. 
with SpaceX, right, or something like that. Yeah, or, right. yeah, yeah. Correct. And that and that's where it gets funny, actually, when it gets funky. Because if you ask right now NASA for yeah. a Termis mission, um, during the Obama administration, he actually like commissioned, like, all right, let's go back to the moon. Yeah, let's. I want you guys to go back yeah. to the moon. And then, so they said, Mr. President, they think we, with the current technology, we might need at least twenty more years. And that's when you go like, wait, what? What happened in 1969? That's right, exactly. <laughs> so, so where's the issue? There? there are there are things that that um, doesn't hold up, yeah, in that sense. But there are ways to prove that are, are at least there are remains of those missions and mm -hmm. there are observable. Um, there are lasers that you can communicate mm -hmm. with yeah. uh, devices that were not landed but actually placed by astronauts yeah. there's a myriad of things that, that that you can prove that we went to the moon and there's also like like people i think people lose time i think the the big smoke wall on the whole moon landing conspiracy is the minor things like the camera right or or the flag waving all of that can be explained by physics or the the actual technology that was public yeah uh, there are more, more um, deeper roots, deeper stuff. Like, for example, the Van Allen uh, rays. Okay. So there was a scientist that found out that there is a radiation belt that actually protects our planet. And and it, this radiation belt, and I'm not going to go deep into that. This is a toy podcast. But, <laughs> but, but that radiation belt, um, it happens to shield. Uh, imagine a, that we have a just giant shield that actually helps mm -hmm. not only how we interact with the, moon, the the sun rays and all that stuff, but it happens that once you cross that that belt, yeah. um, it's very harmful for for humans, right. no matter what you're wearing, right? But it turns out that to get to the moon, you have to cross that belt, mm -hmm. so. When you ask that question to anyone in NASA, they, they give you like a very easy answer. And, of and course, of course. There are other weird things like, for example, the footage, all the footage have you seen? I don't know if you knew this. Um, all the footage have you seen? It's actually a camera aiming at a wall. Okay. Because they didn't feed um, the newscasts or anyone. They basically said, no, we're going to project the live mission, which I think is equally challenge mm -hmm. as someone that, that works on television mm -hmm. to put um, an actual man a vehicle on the moon equally challenge as, as making a live transmission from there from because it's not easy right right but so they broadcast the live transmission on a wall and then everything that we've seen is an actual recording of that projection oh that's wild the footage that came back in here and i'm I'm pretty sure you guys don't know this because of the way of your expression. It was recycled. It was mislabeled on a, on a facilities in Australia and, when, and it was recycled. So that's when you start going like, wait, what? That's the biggest scientific achievement of our species and it was just recycled. So there's a lot of stuff that you can throw on the table and people will go like, wait, what? But I, right. once again, you're not going to you're not going to catch me publicly saying that we didn't go to the moon. There's just so, so many other things, too, as far as uh, there was a movie the year before that Stanley Kubrick directed. There's a rumor that he was uh, commissioned to, to film the scene. And why didn't they take pictures, selfies and stuff like that when they were on the, the moon, moon of moon space Earth. and everything? Yeah. There's so many things. But as far as the conspiracies in general, like you said, little by little information starts coming out. And you start saying, well, what if this is true? What if this didn't really happen or that yeah. didn't happen? Because we have about what six episodes, right? We talk about the JFK assassination, the moon landing. Uh, we have Marilyn Monroe coming up. We talk <laughs> about reptilians. Oh, which is, I'm, I hope it's related to JFK, right? Yes, yes. We, we <laughs> yeah, opened no with, spoilers. We open with JFK. No and we, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, we closed with Marilyn we Monroe's yeah, we closed JFK. Her. Okay, so. yeah. yeah. And did you, you just say reptilian? Yes, sir. We oh, have shit. reptilians dropped last week. I have one. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's what you saw me. Before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. reptilians was his big thing. That was mine. Tell me about it. The conductor came to me one day and we started talking about it. The who? The conductor. The one, the person we were from, if you listen to the show, that's the third guy throughout these special, conspiracy. Our special guest. Our yeah. specialist. Okay. And we started talking. 
And there's a show, Ancient Aliens, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, there's of Scott. course, Ancient Aliens. That's a very mm-hmm. interesting show. Oh shit, I was punching me again. Go for it. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm so I'm so interested in the whole conspiracy thing that I'm forgetting to like, like I need to punch them. <laughs> yeah. So you get to the point like we don't know so much of the earth. We don't know all these monuments of reptilians that we have on pyramids, on hieroglyphics, and all that, whatnot. If you look at the Alfa Romero car emblem, what would you see? You would see a cross, a serpent, eating a baby. He told me that, and I'm like, run it back. So I did my research, and there's been a lot of a lot of people saying that they've seen reptilians, they shapeshift, that it feels like their face doesn't belong to one another, that supposedly they clone us, they have a bunch of clones that they feed on young um, babies' bloods and on the, on the baby's blood. They feed on children. That's why we have a lot of missing children. All the higher ups are reptilians. They're the one percent that control the world. That right now the whole global warming situation is rising the temperatures. Do you think? Do you think something like that will be more public? Like if we if there was a race from somewhere <laughs> uh-huh. feeding on on some of our our own members of yeah. our species, someone would, would have raised that flag and, and then the the organized community would have done something about it, right? If you think about it, but majority of the community, the majority of the world are sheep. We just be we're just herded. You throw anything about a different species, you're gonna cause chaos. That's given. People sometimes can't comprehend the bigger scale that's what's going on. And yes, Maybe someone did raise that white flag, but if we look down in history, there might be moments that that person got silenced. Like, if I'm not mistaken, there was a there was a guy who invented an engine to run on water. No fuel, no nothing. The big corporations. Yeah, there's been more than one actually, that, mm-hmm. and they got silenced. But now, now you're like, I'm I'm having a hard time not just to punch the cameras, but to <laughs> follow up with what, but, what conspiracy but you're is talking that, about. Like, you have higher powers that are going to silence what they don't what they don't want to get that what they don't want to be heard what they don't want out there yet everything has an agenda from my perspective it'll come out when time is right so you think there is a reptilian race currently abducting children on earth yeah i believe that i that's clearly going to be the promo of the show i clearly <laughs> believe that i clearly <laughs> believe <that. laughs> cuz you, you got to see, like, I, I try to see it as a bigger picture. Movies depict it. Like, usually when we see in a movie, we usually see down the road. The scrolls, tape shifters from Marvel. There's, a lot, there's been a lot of movies about... This is also called science fiction. That is true. But you have to have some kind of truth in science fiction. You got There's some truth in there. You have to pick and choose what you want to believe or what you don't want to believe. So it's like, you got to let your mind explore. You have to have your own opinion. And this world is huge. We don't know what's in the center of the earth. They were also saying they were excavating in the city, a major excavation. They hit something. From what I remember reading it, when they found out what they hit, they closed up the dig site and they didn't touch it. But what, where was this? It was either in New York. It was one of the big cities. And they were they were doing an excavation, but they, they, these were like in the 1960s, 70s, give or take. Mm-hmm. And they they t- they went too deep, too deep. And they they stumbled across something, and they didn't want to touch it anymore. Same thing like with the ocean. We've never been back to the ocean like that. We know what less than 20 percent. We know more about space than our own Earth. Well, actually, it was recently discovered that um that under the ocean there is like a humongous ocean bigger than the one that we know yeah it was recently discovered by science so it's it's a lot of things we don't know about the world that we actually live in we're trying to shoot out there like we need to focus more here there could be more things going on maybe the dinosaurs didn't go they didn't go extinct now i'm really stretching it (laughs) (laughs) now i'm stretching it no but we're not the only intelligent intelligent race right now. There has to be more. You mean on the planet or in existence? In existence. Mm-hmm. I, I'm open-minded to that. There's more of life out there. We can't be the only one. So, What do you think? Well, I grew up in the church. 
So for me, um, well, no, for me, you know, <laughs> for me, God created everything and he created this universe that never ends. So for me, there might be other things out there that were created. Have they been to this planet? I don't know. I've never seen one. Um, but also for me too, it's like a lot of, a lot of it is desensitization, desens desensitizing mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling him, I said, I've seen a million Superman movies already. So if Superman came from the sky, I'd be like, oh, look, that's just Superman. Superman. <laughs> you become desensitized to things. And it, it becomes like everyday normal, normalcy. Yeah. But um, I mean, like I said the universe is out there. I don't know what could be out there. Like I said, we, I think the, any machines or rockets that we build can only go a certain amount, of, a certain distance. So who knows what could be out there? There could be celestial beings out there, like in the comics. Who knows? Oh, maybe we are the only intelligent life forms out there. Well, from from a mat, from from a mathematical point of view, and yeah. to the the uh, the size of the observable universe as we know it, it's such a vast amount of space that it right. is technically just by art makes no sense that we're the only planet with some sort of life. It doesn't right. have to it be intelligent to be. life. It could right. be bacterial life yeah there has to be something something uh, out there just just from that perspective have you never seen anything in your life i have actually well tell me about it in new york i was with my best friend john he was riding he was driving i was shotgun his girl was in the back seat his girl's sister was in the other side we we're on the lie middle lane mm -hmm. so if you notice on both sides you have lights so we're driving probably like 50 miles 60 miles per hour this is my car this is the car around probably what 60 degree 30 feet in front of us i see an orb a legit orb the moment the orb latches with my eyes that i'm we're we're locked in it literally shoots from lie from queens to behind new york city the skyline and it leaves a stream i'm thinking i'm going crazy so I go to my best friend, John, and he's crying. So you went away from you. Yeah, exactly. Shot away. As soon as he saw me lock eyes with it, mm -hmm. boom, shot right across. I go to John. He's crying hysterically, and I'm laughing, and I can't contain my laugh. And I'm like, am I the only one that's all here? Like, no, I was about to tell you that. And to this day, we had that moment, and it's like, all right, there's something. Well, different. did it feel? Because, you know, there, there's, I don't know if you guys are aware of the Stephen Greer and everything that he does. Like, he's, he's trying to teach everyone how to make contact. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and he seems to be very successful at it. And uh, there was an event. The video is incredible because they're, like, camping on the beach. It's mm -hmm. through meditation, and, and the, there's a myriad of things that you have to do without consuming anything. Yeah. It's just, meditating and connecting it's based on consciousness yeah but they they recorded an actual light that looked like the sun in the middle of the night and then of course once you if, if you're if you're a skeptic and then you start seeing this thing you think, well yeah i can that can mimic that or maybe it was a plane or and just in that moment when you're like doubting a second light pops up it's so crazy it's like two suns and it's it's crazy but he always mentions something that there's there's a connection. Like for example, when people see stuff, yeah. and then they say, "Oh, I wish it would have stayed longer," or "Or I wish they can come back." Apparently, this this whatever they are, they come back, and they, they, there's a connection based on consciousness. Do you feel something like that in your experience? When I felt that, I got you know you get the goosebumps, but it feels a very it's a very euphoric feeling like. What did I just witness? What did I just see? What did I feel? And then to actually experience it with someone, to like solidify, I'm not the only one that saw this. That was the best moment. And to this day, I tell them, I'm like, you know, we, we saw this together. For some reason, they might come for us later. And we're like, oh, it's you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they know us. But it's it, it scares you. I'm right. not going to lie. It's scary because it's something different. Why? It's something you can't control. It's something you have no idea about. You have no uh, knowledge of, and it defies everything you see. How can you go from point A to point B in a second? And then you line up with stories from other people and on, you know, on videos and shows, is a resemblance. So or, what? What do you guys think they don't tell us? Like, the, you know, obviously the the government of the powers that be, they're fully aware of this context. Like, I don't know if you followed what happened in Congress last year with. Um, and actually at the beginning of the year that this was 
an attempt to formal disclosure by 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 formal vetted um, intelligence officers who actually went and, and gave first hand knowledge mm-hmm. and crash retrieval programs and 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 a lot of things that they, that ufologists never dream of uh, um, seeing at the floor in Congress. Um, but the reaction from the powers that be is still the same. Like, nope, there's no no evidence. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. What do you think that is? I think for me, I, as I'm getting a little older, like I don't I don't follow any particular political party, but I feel as a lot of things they like to keep us in the dark about, and I feel like we're always we're always being kept distracted and and at each other's throats with uh, hatred and racism and anything else that could be going on. This is going on over here to distract you from what's really going on over here. Yes. So I think there's a lot of that going on. I think there's a lot of cover ups going on. It's just a way to for me to keep people in control and keep people. But you you think we're ready for disclosure? Would you be ready? No, I don't think we're ready. I am ready, but we, you, you're not ready. There well, you go. I, I personally, I feel I'm ready, but I don't think the world is well, ready. Well, you said you were raised on a, on a religious mm-hmm. family. So let, let's, on a hypothesis, right? Okay. This is, let's, just play, let's just play imagination. Central Park. Okay. Since you're both from here. Yeah. Giant spaceship the size of a stadium lands in the middle of a Wednesday at 3 p.m in some sort of 14 feet tall thing walks out and says, we're back. Um, we're back. Mm -hmm. Um, we created you guys a couple of hundred thousand years ago. And, and then, you know, when people like religion and stuff like that, they start telling how the world goes Mm -hmm. and then like, Oh, I'm sorry that you, you took the message the wrong way, but no, you guys are, were created on a lot. How do you think religious people will, will take that? I think there would be an uproar because it's not what they what they believe. So how do I know there's beings coming from another planet that they're not filling me with false information? I, I was taught to believe, not, not really taught, but raised. Raised to believe this. And mm-hmm. then if, you know, sometimes you do your own investigation, you get closer to it, you start believing it more, you start feeling things. And then for something like that to happen, I mean, it would be wild. I, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I've seen so many movies, I'd be ready for it. Because <laughs> you probably, you ne- you're never ready for it. <laughs> but it's it's a clash. It's a clash. It's a clash. It's a clash. With the hypothesis. That With I the hypothesis. Yeah. Fun fact. When I was doing my communion, I told the priest... He was giving us, oh, God created this, God created that, this, that, and the third. I hit him with the, so if God created Jesus, who created God? He couldn't answer me. I have I believe in a higher power. I pray to the higher power, all that. If the aliens were the higher power, and they come down, they touch down, and they could give me facts, I'll be in a conflict, but I always felt there was something bigger than just the religion that we've so got you, role you wouldn't even have an issue to just translate your dogma to this new new entities. I, I might I might not, but I might be more open than than five. Cause I've left that a long time ago. You will be skeptic. If they told me that, that they came back and no, I believe what the Bible says. I what mean, if 100%. they prove what if they prove that, that you know, we just got it wrong? Like we just didn't understand. We didn't know good. We didn't know better back then. So I'm come, just playing. I'm just I'd playing. Have to, you guys are into conspiracy. You know, I, 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 have to, I, have to, I have to hypothetically be in a hypothetical situation. <laughs> no, you're there right you now. You know what I'm saying? But I know what... I, what Let me put an example. Yes, Let me ahead. put another example. Moses. Mm-hmm. He takes the, the Jewish people out of Egypt. Yes, correct. Right? They escape from the Egyptians. And then they cross the river and then they spend 40 years walking in the desert as we as genesis tells us right, right? Yeah, right, right. and then they're following yahweh and which is god and the the the, the, um, the jewish god right but if you read genesis with a different light they're basically following something that they describe as a cloud correct silver gassy and when it gets to the night and they want to rest the cloud lands on a mountain and just wait for the following day to take off 
and keep showing the light. When they're hungry, there's thunder that comes from the cloud and kill birds and the birds fall and they eat from that. When there's a tribe that won, because Moses was the, the middleman. When right, there's correct, a tribe right. that want to go and talk straight to the main guy and, and, and that wasn't allowed and they try to go up, rays came from the cloud and burned those coming up. So yeah, 5,000 years ago, I could easily see that as, as a God giving me directions. Mm -hmm. But if that happens now, it will be recorded as an alien encounter. And there was a, yes, a spaceship right. like, guiding us and, and, and shooting rays and killing birds and stuff like that. So what if this, going back to hypothesis, this is we're, just, we're, we're just playing around here. <laughs> um, what if this guy said, no, you just got it wrong? That would be crazy. And I, that's, uh, that's a tough question for me to answer. Because I know how, like I said, reading and doing my own investigation, I know how I feel and how, what I get from it. And I see how, um, I see how, yeah, it could be misinterpreted, absolutely. But I don't think it, it would be misinterpreted to that point. Because when the, to me, when the Bible speaks about God, I think a lot of people put God in the box. Oh, God can do this, but he can't do that. Why can't he do that? He's God, he can do everything. So if he wants to come Ooh, down. Yeah, but what's a, another example, the book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. He said, a, 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 like, a, like a chariot of the it's his description of an angel is an actual description of a spaceship. First, yeah, starters. correct. Like and monsters. Then he's taking, he's taken to this thing in the sky, mm -hmm. and then he can see the planet. He can see the planet from above, and then he interacts with these things. And then, if you read that description, it's wild. It's an abduction. It's wild. It's an alien abduction more than than now that we that we're more knowledgeable in terms of um technology we yeah. can like visualize things differently back then obviously this thing floating from, from um, in the sky it's like some sort of deity right but right now you will call and say that's a spaceship yeah because now you right. you're, you can comprehend that there might be another civilization that might develop sure, sure. a means of transportation that looks like technology now they're floating around it, it's different it's different yeah and i think um you know, with technology and movies and things like that, I mean, you see, like, again, you see so many things that you would become skepti skeptical to some things. You'd be like, yeah, there's possibly that this exists or this could be that or that could be this. But, I mean, for me, again, I know my beliefs and you'd have to really do a number on me to try and convince me of something else. Yeah, are you aware of the Sumerians and all that? The Sumerians, the Anunnaki, Anunnaki, the Nephilim, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that's one of the claims. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they say that the Watchers, there was about 200 Watchers that were assigned to watch the humans on Earth. And they wound up taking women and animals and having sex with them and creating these incredible beasts. Well, the, the like translation that. from the cuneiforms, uh, rocks, there's, there's almost a literal, well, it's debatable also. But there's almost a literal description of how they infuse... Yes. Um, their DNA into primal mammals yeah, and that yeah. eventually led to who we are. And then what if, if going back to my theory is actually Anunnaki saying, oh, we're just, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> it who was knows? us. That's wild. I'm That's sorry, wild. guys, that you guys made this stories and all yeah. that. It was us. It's been us all yeah. along. Like you wouldn't be able to grasp that. It, it, I believe that's the reason why there's no formal disclosure because we're not ready. That could be. That could be. And I think thing this... I think a lot of humans can't um, grasp common concepts, and I think something like that, like our brains are not ready for well, you gotta anything think, like you gotta that. You got to think about it too. You're raised from one to ten, like you're in a path. That's your whole life. You throw this in the mix, you, it's gonna break you. Absolutely. You're not you're not flexible. You're very you're fragile. Any kind of bend, you crack. That's it. Your mind is not ready to accept. This is the reality versus what Once I thought again, was the reality. Right. I think that's the reason why there's no formal disclosure. I agree. Because we're not ready. Right. Like in Puerto Rico, the, the, the Indians in Puerto Rico, there's a famous um, anecdote that the shaman goes to the shore mm -hmm. and he sees the Spanish um, ships, the, the big, you know, Spanish barco gigante, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes and calls everyone in the tribe and they go and, and the, so, you know, the brain, the main, the main function of the brain is not 
thought. It's actually to keep us survival. Correct. It's your brain mm -hmm. revolves and around and works every day, you know, making sure that you survive, yes, whatever the, the threat is. Uh, and sometimes, and that's something that is being seen in trauma, for example, um, we just block things. Like, yeah, like yeah, childhood I, trauma, I agree, there are people that, that during therapy, they sure. just remember something that they forgot. Fight or and flight. It's correct. And it's not necessarily that they forgot. It's, it's, it might be the case that the brain, in order to protect the host, just block it. So the Indians in Puerto Rico, they, they went to the shore and they told the shaman, I don't see anything. It was so far-fetched to see a giant boat with white people that right. their, brain, their brain just shut down. Shut, down. Shut, down. shut down. And they couldn't see anything. It was in front of them and they couldn't see it. You ever see that movie uh, Limitless with Bradley Cooper and mm -hmm. Robert De Niro? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's that's if, if you think about it, really, how, what percentage of our brains are we, do we actually use? And how much, what percentage is actually shut down? If, think about it. It becomes, and then it's your subconscious. Right. You know, if we know that, it just it moves over. Like, you only use a fraction of your brain. Yeah, if we, only, if we were able to use 100% of our brains, like, what would we see? What would we be able to comprehend? You know, like, when we talk about conspiracies and things like that, if you look at all the hieroglyphics and ancient drawings and caves, I'm an artist too. And my, you know, as far as creativity and things like that, using my imagination and everything. And I'm like, these people must have seen these things to draw them in, a, you know, to draw these things in caves and hieroglyphics Spacemen and things like that. In different, and in different areas that were huge distances right. from one another. Yeah, there's one, there's one in New Zealand and there's one in Australia. The, the one in Australia is just mind-blowing, mind-blowing, but... You, I'm, I'm so I, I need evidence. And right, I, right. I, I would like to call myself a skeptic, but at the same time, I'm I'm not. I just need evidence. I just need to palpable evidence. I can't I Tangible. can't rely on faith, need, yeah, right? Yeah. So there's also the fact that recently, not discovered, but there was a there was a, a paper published not so long ago that that. They actually found out that in caves, the vast majority of caves that had drawings, the level of oxygen is actually very low. Okay. And it turns out that when you you, it's not like you can breathe. You can breathe, but you're not taking the same intake as you used to be, and that mm -hmm. can easily lead to either hallucinations, um, or or naturally getting high. Mm -hmm. So so maybe. And it could Due be, to yeah. lack of oxygen, these people were getting naturally high in those caves, and they just went Picasso on those walls. Who knows? Who knows? And we don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't know. Like I said, there's so many things out there that we do not know. That it's it, to me, it's fascinating that what we don't know. Like you said before, the ocean. We how much of the ocean have we explored? Twenty percent. Mm. Like what's in that other 80 percent that we well, don't know thankfully, about thankfully where the, the human should be just stay away from, from the ocean <laughs> if you look at the ocean it's a it's a wonder but it's a dangerous wonder i think the human should stay away from a lot of things we <laughs> destroy everything <laughs> that is true <laughs> i was i was recently in puerto rico mm -hmm. coincidentally and that we, i'm always talking about this i'm actually developing a, a couple of documentaries in regards to of, of, of um UFOs, now okay, they call awesome. UAPs, but whatever. And so I was asking um, people in Puerto Rico, and there's in a specific area where they, they it was incredible because they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we see them every day. And I go, oh, cool, every day. And they go, like, yeah, yeah, just come around six, give me a call before, and I'll let you know. I'll take you to a place so where you can see them. And I go, like, Right. Like today, or is there a schedule? Is there, like, this is what how did, how did they call you before they was like, no, 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 just come, come, come around six, and I'll, I'll let you know where what? they. And okay. I'm like, what? It turns out there's in a specific place in Puerto Rico that they they believe there is a, a base on the water. Okay. Mm. Um, and there's daily sightings. It's incredible. Those are called USO, the ones that goes on the water, and uh, Richard Dolan actually a, new, a ufologist who's been on this forever, he actually mapped out the um, cases of USOs worldwide yeah. and Puerto Rico happens to be a hot pot. When That's you wild. put it on a map, Puerto Rico lits up like the 4th of July. Um, and there's there was a Homeland Security um, actually disclosed and released by the Pentagon. There was a video okay. um, of a Homeland Security plane that they capture a device 
a USO, U, UAP. Mm -hmm. so not, UFO. I, I, I want to keep calling them UFOs, right? But they call it transmedium, I think is the term, because okay. it was it was first, it was detected um, near orbit. It was like 60,000 feet up. Okay. And then he went down. They recorded that. It looked like a sphere. Um, so he was flying. That's the second medium. Space, now air. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he, he made impact underwater. He came back out and split in two and then what, went back in. In, in, crazy. Water, crazy. Yeah. in Puerto Rico. There's That's so insane. much stuff out there that we don't know about. That's Fascinating, insane. mind can be blown. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. But that's that's why when when we met and when you guys started talking, I'm like, oh yeah, I would love to talk about that. <laughs> it's a toy show, but I would love to talk about that. It's, th it's things that open up your mind, like you express yourself, and it's and if you think about it, the o what what if aliens don't come from space? What if they come from the ocean? Well, or or, or what if they come from another dimension? That's what I was going to get to, but you beat me to the punch. And there's been a lot of talk of opening portals and other dimensions and time travel and everything like that. Time so, paradoxes, Indiana Jones, that movie they showed in the sky, <laughs> you fly into that, but it's, what if it's in the ocean? Right. Is it, is it possible? Is it or is it not? Is it possible? Yeah, well, that's that's the main thing, right? Yeah. Then, so what do you think, well, What would? how would you take if there are from another dimension? I would definitely take it. I, I I would be ready to accept that because I feel, <laughs> I feel all, I feel all these all these creatures and angels and things like that. I mean, it's like a whole nother dimension that we have no knowledge of. So to me, to to if you said to me, I got proof that there's another dimension, I would be like, let's go see it. I'm ready to see it because I would believe that. I would believe that. I personally believe that when people say, why, well, you know, one of the main, like, for example, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he always says, like, why are the videos are, are blurry? Why can't we have an actual um, a high rise? Thing? And that, I believe it has to do, and I'm actually surprised that that comes from him. It has to do with dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the reason to explain, actually, let me go ahead and explain that to you. So, funny enough, I think I have enough here to explain. <laughs> So I'm ready. Be ready. That mentioned not really. I, mean, I just realized that maybe I can do this. I can try to pull a Kurt Sagan here because um, right. I have all the elements. So dimensions are measured by by the distance that you can travel mm -hmm. within the dimension. Okay. So um, a, a two dimensional object like Luigi here. Yeah. Do you remember uh, Luigi? Mm -hmm. He can only travel this way or this way. Right. Right. Therefore, he's on 2D. Yes, he's sir. in right. a 2D. Obviously, 2D will be way thinner than this, but mm -hmm. let's, let's ignore the, sure, the physics of that. that. Gotcha. He can't do this. Right. We can do that because we live in a third dimension. Mm -hmm. So let me get this guy. So if this guy, which is a third dimension object, lands on 2D world, Luigi's not going to see Rey Mysterio. He's just going to see a layer of oh, those red boots that's wild that might look like the plates that we always looked that's why they're always like that mm -hmm. so wow. he won't be able to see because his mind is built in 2d and therefore he won't be able to comprehend right. 3d like world 3D. we are built in 3d in 3d and yeah. that's like actually this is a tresserac this is an actual um way of so we are built within this 3d world mm -hmm. and this might be fourth and fifth so technically it's something like this oh mm -hmm. shit. so we don't understand so what happened is that when you touch the different dimensions you just get a glimpse of it but not necessarily the full thing the way it's supposed to look because right. you don't you can't even comprehend that so i i think it will be wild to make contact from something from a different dimension than my my Sumerian landing in New York. Um, got you, got uh, you. Like thing, you know. <laughs> no, I fully believe in, in dimension, other dimensions, and portals being open and things like that. I think all that stuff exists. Like I think I told you one time, like, which if you have dreams, are you actually in another dimension? Are you astro projecting? You really want to go there? What if you're? I, I'm just saying. What if? You're well, the thing is that we don't know. We don't know. We don't mm -hmm. know what dreams are. Right. There, there's this lovely paper from this guy. I can't remember his name, and I hate to do that. I should quote it that properly. That he's trying to prove um, a theory where he thinks that dreams are actually like fire drills. 
is basically once again the, the the brain trying to teach you how to survive so sometimes mm -hmm. when you get like bad dreams it's, yeah. it's like a rehearsal of something that hasn't happened right. but if it happens now you know what to do your right. muscle memory will kick in because you already lived it in the dream right, right. That, makes, right. That's, right. that makes a lot of sense right so there's a scientist trying to prove that okay. on, a, on a theoretical okay. le level so that's like, interesting like i've had death like my mom has passed away and my grandparents have passed Sorry away about that. thank you thank you and i have a lot of dreams about them and you know different things happen in different dreams and i say to myself wow did i just visit them in another dimension in the you know they're yeah. younger in that dimension they're healthy you know it, all those things cross your mind and it, oh so you see them do you see a younger version of them? In I've, I've had dreams of my grandparents and grandparents. They're younger um, from when I remember them when I was a kid. Um, they're healthy. They're not sick. So maybe that's how I remember them or I want to remember them. Or again, maybe I'm actually traveling into another dimension and I'm seeing them how they are. It's like you said, we don't really know what dreams are. It's, it's very wild to sit there and well, think about there's, it. You, I, at this point, I, I figure you... You know you're talking to a geek. Uh, <laughs> there is there is this um, thing called um, memory cells in, okay. within our DNA, mm -hmm. right? And uh, they actually did an experiments with rats. They had different sources of food, and one of the sources had a, a minor um, electric charge to it. So when the rats try to grab fruit from there, they just get like a te like a teaser, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, get a, sh a shock from it. At some point, they, they avoided it because they all knew right. this thing had an electric charge to it. Eventually, those rats had offsprings, and those offsprings were, weren't exposed to this thing. They waited three generations, I believe, to expose the third generation to the experiment. And mm -hmm. the third generation that never been there before, they never touched the, that really? corner because they so. have the genetic memory of you shouldn't go there because that means danger right so there is from in principle mm -hmm. there technically we we have a way to record and keep certain information in, in theory um there this goes back to einstein that um, information um is conserved in the universe in every sense right okay and so technically we are monsters of hundreds of thousands of years of age if we have those hard drives from our ancestors mm -hmm. they're not active because we don't need them they're dormant right? for now they're, yeah. they're dormant because we don't need them yeah, they're right. dormant in certain certain ways mm -hmm. like for example we're not hairy again mm -hmm. because now we wear stuff and we don't need to protect ourselves mm -hmm. so evolution kind of goes and check that information yep. and, and applies so maybe what you're looking at is is those memories that you have in store in your genes because no, they were passed down. Yeah. I don't know. That's theory from a it's a theory. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. We we know we really don't know. It's like deja vu also. Deja vu also. I know I've been in this situation before. I know I've seen that person. You can't think of it. Could be it could have been a dream or something that you had. They say before. supposedly when you have that dream, you don't remember that dream. So that would be your deja vu. And I've had an, I've had a lot of deja vu moments, and it hits you as soon as it happens. Like I've seen this before. Well, deja vu is technically that, for example, you say something, and then you do something with your hand, and then I go, "Wait, I know this. I mm -hmm. I I've done mm -hmm. this already." Mm -hmm. It's that feeling of right. There are many theories for that. But it's 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 not just that. It's a whole scenario that as soon as it happens. I remember I was in seventh grade, and this girl she says some something slick and she was like like she was bullying me and when it happened i'm like i remember this i see a pattern because there's always a girl involved when you get <laughs> see aliens or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no 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 pattern no pattern but, no. <laughs> but, they, but they say but they say like we dream every night and you have consecutive dreams you all you very rarely you remember hundreds of thousands actually yeah. the one that you remember supposedly is uh, the last one that you had before you woke up but that does not mean that you spend the whole night dreaming right so it's right. hundreds of thousands of dreams every it's, night it's crazy when you really think about it yeah yeah like yeah. have you ever continued from a dream you wake up and you continue yes, right back yeah like wherever you I left haven't. off i have done I that have. before you have ha that? have you flown yes, in my I dreams have, have yes i have when as soon as you yeah. realize you're in a dream you take off like it's all in your control 
I, I was shooting the wrong camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all, it's all, it's all in your control. Like it's amazing because you, it's like you're watching a movie of yourself. But once you hit that, that button, like oh crap! It's like playing a video game. Uh huh. So you're saying no, I have, I haven't had that experience. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty bittersweet. You're like, I don't want to wake up. I want to keep doing what I was doing. Well, I want sleep, to keep opening these doors. <laughs> well, sleep paralysis. Have you ever gone through sleep paralysis? I have had that. that. I have had that. That's a crazy experience also. Supposedly your brain wakes up before your body. Yes. No, no, your body wakes up before... It's, it's, the, other, it's, it's the, other the other way around. around. Yeah. Way around. Right. And you feel like someone's giving you pressure here. Right. It's like when, well, also with that feeling of... Like, a pro, I don't know if that happens to you. You're like asleep and then you feel like you're falling and then you're like... Mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Shake up. Mm-hmm. Well, there, there's... There's a paper also that that is supporting the theory that when we used to sleep in branches and and when, you know, there was a reason to sleep in the branch because, A, there were predators Mm -hmm. uh, below and then you, like, were trying to protect yourself. But if you fall from it, not only the fall will be ahead, but then you'll be prey. So apparently that, that hasn't totally fade out. Of our system. Of our system. And then sometimes you just get this alert of like, don't fall from the tree. And then but you're in your bed in Hialeah. You know? <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a trigger. <laughs> it's a trigger mechanism. It's something that it has in evolution, hasn't completely decoded from the code, if you will. Like you mentioned before, how many things do we have in our brains and our bodies that are there, but nothing has triggered, triggered that yet? Sure, agreed. I what agree. if you have superpowers and you're waiting for something to trigger it? <laughs> what those superpowers? How much, how much comics have you read? I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> if you have to choose superpowers, which one would you like? If you, Let's say, <laughs> all right, you can have a superpower. Which one would you pick? If I could pick one basic one, for me, it would always be, any, any time, be able any to time. fly. I always wanted to be able to fly. Okay. All right. How about you? Control time. Control time. Control time. Why is that? You can go anywhere in time. You can witness everything for yourself. You can manipulate it to your gains or your failures. You have utter control, but you explore the world or you explore the universe in your own eyes. You have that power. You can't, you're not going to be going down the road of, oh, he said this, I'm going to believe this. No, I'll go there. Let me see what it is. But do you have the superpower to go and see everything in time or do you have the ability to change things in time also because what if you're going to start changing things that's, that's what that's number. what i said to my gain or to my failure so i will be able to control I'm, if i control time i will let's say i want to go back to 1960s i'm going back and i like an actual projection on myself i want to go back i want to be there like what you call it like uh come can you interact with the, in in this hypothetical exercise can you interact right. with the past or are you just there to, to to witness as a watcher yes i would want to interact it'll be my playground yeah <laughs> from, from physics point of view that that can be uh, done but then this episode is going to last two hours if i start <laughs> <straight> <laughs> <now>. <laughs> but like like theoretically yeah, if i want that like i would want it's you know it's just a superpower. Like right. I would I would have to, I would want everything to be off bar. Like I would want to do anything with time itself. You know, just mine will be super strong. It's easy. Simple. That, that tops everything. I mean, you can be strong enough to jump, and then that will equate um, right. flying. Fly, yeah. Or I can run fast enough to bend time and go back in time, and then flash and all that. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So now the question is that you could be a superhero. Any comic book universe, who would you pick? Well, I sometimes I think without the millions, sometimes I think that I'm Batman. <laughs> um, I guess Superman. I would say the same. Absolutely. Yeah, it's Superman. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's the most powerful superhero ever. He's all the great powers. What about you? I want Spider Man. Spider Man is cool too. Spider Man is actually is, my favorite. Is, yeah. Spider-Man. You're from Queens. Yeah. <laughs> Born and raised. <laughs> there we go. But Spider-Man will be my favorite. Just his... He's humble. He's not power hungry. He's extremely smart. Extremely smart. He's extremely strong. He holds back, he holds back a lot of his strength. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Spider-Man is the underdog. And that's yes. why that character is so popular. It's, 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 he's the underdog. You know, this is, you, you re- I, I relate to him more with the whole growing up in Queens. And then it's just... And the thing with Spider-Man, too, he has an incredible rogues gallery. 
Nice. One of the best in comics, along with Batman. I think Batman has yeah an awesome rogues gallery. Also, those two have my favorite rogues galleries yeah. as far as villains go. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure having you here. I'm I'm pretty sure yes, this could be definitely. the first of many. And sure, yeah, sure. once you start um, doing more. Um, Conspiracy theories that now you know you have someone that you can talk to. And yes. I oh, no, we, we definitely, that. we definitely want to do the same because you, you hit the dots, you pick the brains. <laughs> I have so much I want to talk. I'm like, you know what? Let me conserve it back. But ah, uh, just one thing, the whole thing with your mind, right? You said that with, with every, all that path down generations, all that. What if that's what we don't have our mind at 100? percent What if we could unlock all that if our brain was fully at 100? percent Well, technically. From from a biology point of view, you shouldn't, because there those memories doesn't apply to your environment. Like if you, from an evolutionist point of view, you you shouldn't you access shouldn't. that because that uh, you you learn from that. Like also nature is very wise in the sense of um, there's no energy is the most valuable item, and then you have to be very smart about how to use energy. So you don't spend energy on things that doesn't give you anything back to your to your pro, pro, in productivity mm -hmm. type of things, right? So why would you go and revisit something that happened 200 years ago when the world was different and things didn't apply in the same way? And then there might be some learning from it, but it's it just be minute. Tiny. But the, sometimes right. it so goes little, little small your, things. Your body already went through that process, no. and there's a lot of stuff. Actually, there is um, a new trend um, of, and this is still being measured. Mm -hmm. But apparently, um, since ten year, ten years ago, I think the whole thing started. Kids are starting to to be born without the the tiny. Um, Finger on on their on their feet, really. The really? tiny pinky one, toe. The, the pinky, pinky toe. The pinky toe. Right, and the reason why is that we're not running um, barefoot anymore, and okay. that's the one that holds balance. So since we're not running to get food or running to prevent to be food, and we don't need that type of equilibrium, that thing is useless. Wild. So evolution is just like get rid of it. That's insane. So that applies to memories. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's, oh god, that's insane. So, like I said, there's so much, there's so much out there. Yeah, our brains can't can't comprehend. For sure, for sure. Well, once again, guys, thank you so much for thank coming. You for thank, you for thank you for having us again. Thank you. Yes, definitely. For sure. I really hope you liked this episode, and don't forget, we did a bunch of episodes in the past, so just go and search the channel and check them out as well, because there's a lot of a lot of plastic chats and a lot of toy talk, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it.